Good morning and welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday where we commemorate the beginnings of the Protestant Reformation as Martin Luther, our denomination's namesake, nailed the 95 Theses to the door to begin the breaking away of the Catholic Church. I'm Pastor Joe. It's a privilege and a blessing to be here with you in worship this morning. It was a little drizzly, so combined with the cold, it made sense for us to worship indoors today. As we gather together in worship this morning, often our hearts are filled with joy as we come to this place and gather together, um, but sometimes our hearts are heavy and sometimes we gather in grief. And that is one of those mornings this morning as, as I'm here with you today. This weekend, one of our high schoolers, Amanda Schlieben, passed away. Please keep the Schlieben family and the entire Glenbard West community in your prayer knowing that sometimes there are no words to express the depth of our grief. More information about a possible service will be, will be coming forward. And again, um, know, that, know that whatever you bring to worship this morning, whether that's joy, whether that's the deepest sorrow, God is big enough for it, and it is all welcome here. In other announcements, um, next weekend is All Saints Sunday. It's also the time to switch your clocks back and fall back an hour. So praise God for an extra hour of sleep. Fall Workday will be happening on October 31st. And then for All Saints this year, this is the beginning of the first Sunday um, of indoor worship. We, with the increased mitigation measures as laid out um, by the state of Illinois, um, we can have no more than 25 people in the sanctuary when we worship indoors. For, so for this Sunday, All Saints, we are inviting the families of those who have lost loved ones to be with us for that Sunday. And then starting on November 8th, a new plan will be announced. We give you thanks for your patience with us, for your patience as we continue to do what's safest and best for our community when we gather together. Bringing whatever is on our hearts and minds to God, we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts forever. Amen.
First reading, Romans 3:19 through 28. Now we know whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law of the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since they have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift of atonement of His blood, effective through faith. He did not show His righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by, by that law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by law. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. If the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 503 years ago, a young Catholic priest named Martin Luther had had enough. Tired of trying to recount all his sin every time he went to confession and still feeling no better after he left the confessional, Luther had an epiphany, rereading the book of Romans and specifically the verses we heard today. His epiphany, the church in telling people what it had to do to earn God's grace and forgiveness, was wrong. Indulgences, penance, purgatory, that stuff could all be let go. But don't just take my word for it. A 2013 actress sang a song that has, I think, a lot of similarities to Martin Luther's story. So hear it in her slightly modified words. Keep it in. Heaven knows I tried. Don't let them men, don't let them see. Be the good priest you've always got to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they.
Maybe not what you were expecting. Elsa from 2013's Frozen had something that was different about her. Her ability to create winter snow and icicles at will made her bad, at least in the eyes of her parents and those around her. She was told her difference was not something to be proud of, but it was something to bury down, keep hidden away, and only by being good and like everyone else could she be accepted. Earn love and respect by not being who she truly was. Until her epiphany that this hiding was sapping her of real, true love, and so she let it go. She did face conflict initially, but at the end of it, she was welcomed back for who she truly was, the Queen of Aaron. Martin Luther hoped his story would have the same kind of reconciliatory ending. He wrote 95 arguments against the sale of indulgences, a form of buying your way out of punishment into paradise. He hoped that through this argument, sure, some conflict would come, but ultimately the Pope and the Church as a whole would recognize the error of its ways, come to understand the true nature of God's grace. It wasn't to be. Instead of reconciliation, the conflict heated up to the point where Luther was asked to take back everything he had said or be exiled from the church. And this led to his famous statement, Here I stand. And thus a new era in the church was born. This is, of course, the church we were born into. A church built on grace and the promise of God's love and the power of God's forgiveness that's able to overcome anything. Church built on the belief that we're saved by the grace of God alone, sola gratis, regardless of anything we've done, could do, or will do. We can't buy our way into heaven. We can't earn our way into God's favor. Nothing about who we are or what we do, even if we have the power to shoot icicles out of our fingertips, makes God love us any less. Grace alone. It makes for a fine ideal. It makes for a very difficult practice. God's grace is limitless, but our human capacity to carry that grace out has limits. The practice of keeping people outside the church has continued in one way or another since Luther's day. Sure, we may flinch at the idea of wealth still giving someone more favor of God, but there are still churches where wealth indicates God's blessing. And even in our Lutheran church, there can be times where it seems we're more reflective of the Catholic Church of Luther's day than the ideal of grace that Luther found in Romans 3. Sometimes it's about who we love. Sometimes it's about one action that's deemed worse than all other actions and causes us to become single-issue voters for politicians who promise to put an end to that one action. Sometimes it's even so simple as to be about those who don't come every week, that it seems their other activities take priority. Whatever it is, we find a justification for it. But reading Romans 3, I have to ask, how does God justify us? Luther hoped that when he started what would become known as the Protestant Reformation would not be the end of the reforming of the church. He longed for a church that was constantly reforming, constantly re-examining itself, constantly asking, what are we getting stuck in? What do we judge others for that gets in the way of God's ultimate life-giving grace? That is the church we're pledging to be a part of by calling ourselves Lutheran. One where we can maybe disagree with each other. I'm sure not everyone was thrilled about Elsa's powers walking back into her midst. But longing for a church where we can disagree with each other, but still allow the grace of God to give them room with us. Later on in Romans, in the 8th chapter, Paul tells us nothing, nothing, can separate us from the love of God that's in Jesus. Not anything about the way we die. Not anything about the way we live our life. Not anything supernatural, not anything in this natural world. But what if they like the sports team we hate? Nothing. What if they don't fit into our ideal of a good Christian? Nothing. But what if she had an appointment? Nope. Nothing. 
I believe, for me, to be Lutheran means that when I find myself excluding because a long-held practice or belief gets in the way, I look to Jesus' example on the cross where he forgave even those who crucified him. And what does that look like in practice now? Well, I believe that looks like us faithfully asking God to lead us in a way that affirms people for who they are, all of who they are, and then take our tradition that's impeding grace. Damn. You're at home, you can sing along. Let it go, let it go. God's grace is big enough for us anyways. Amen. That priceless grace, that priceless grace, that priceless grace which gave me Jesus, life is priceless grace. That priceless grace is life for me. That priceless blood, that priceless blood, that priceless blood was shed for me. Jesus' blood is priceless grace. That priceless grace is life that painful death, that painful death, that painful death took sins away. Jesus' death is priceless grace. That priceless grace is life for me. That precious word, that precious word, that precious word which brought me life. Jesus' word is priceless grace. That priceless grace is life for me. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for all who are in need. Renew and inspire the church in freedom of the gospel, O oh God, where the church is in error and torment, where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it, where the church is divided, unify it, and ignite us in the working of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As the earth changes, O oh Lord, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind, fires, floods, drought. Lord, in your mercy. Your Guide areas of the world, O oh Lord, divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Guide our world as we continue to make our way through health crisis. Unify us so we can overcome together. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy Lord, release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing to those who are ill. Bring your strength to all who are grieving, especially the family of Amanda Schuman. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. On this Reformation Sunday, we give you thanks for all who have shown us truth and freedom, including Martin Luther and all who work for the renewal of the church. 
Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, today is to be, or was to be, is Commitment Sunday, the day uh, where we drop off, or will normally drop off, the, our commitment cards, our commitment for the year 2021. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, thank you for all who have. You can put those in the mail. You can drop them off at the church uh, starting tomorrow morning. Or if you want to, you can, as soon as you're done watching worship online, you can go to uh, WW Faith Online, our website, and there's a way to fill out an online commitment card there. We thank you for your commitments. Our commitments, these commitments we make, are a commitment of our financial gifts, but they are mostly, most deeply, they are a commitment to making possible all that happens in this place. To making possible that a place where we hear the promises of God's salvation and redemption reconciliation and resurrection commitments to a place where that message is heard and shared so thank you the lord be with you and also with you holy are you O god for you have created all things and by your grace, you wash away our sin, and you make all things new. And so we remember how on the night in which he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people and on this bread and wine as they become the body and blood of your Son. Direct our hearts and hands and gifts in sharing your love. And make us one with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And I invite you, if you have a communion kit with you at home, to go ahead and open it now and to get out um, the wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen.